Hey everyone, welcome to the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining me today is Jov, co-founder and head of product at Time Plus, uh, a company that recently open sourced Proton. I'm very excited to talk about this. Jov, thanks so much for joining. And uh, let's kick it off with some information about your personal background and then how Time Plus gets started. Yeah, my name is Job Tom. I'm uh, based in Vancouver. I'm one of the co-founder for Tempest, and uh, we have been uh, working on the next generation streaming processing engine uh, to make the data engineer and uh, the pipeline engineer much easier to process their data. And uh, uh, at a high level, that is, this is uh, really a new way to process the data without uh, worrying too much regarding tuning JVM, and setting up the cluster. And this is really a new way to uh, process data in a much efficient way. Worry about less uh, infrastructure stuff. And uh, yeah, um, I'm happy to discuss more about this uh, space and uh, do some demo later. Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I would love to hear a little more about how you experienced this problem throughout your career so far, and then all the way to actually um, starting your open source motion with Proton. I think it's been a few months um, of, the, of the first release. So, how do you experience this problem before? Yeah, of course. So, actually, I. Uh, uh, in this space, like over 20 years, I worked for a company like IBM for four year and a half, worked for uh, EMC uh, Documentum, which is a content management enterprise search uh, product for the other four year and a half. I worked for the company called Splunk, which is the very first uh, uh, kind of big data company get IPO and the focus a lot on the log analysis, observability, security. Uh, in the company I worked for, uh, for them uh, seven years and a half. So that, so even I already, this is my 21, 22 uh, year uh, of working, but uh, I only work for not a lot of company, but uh, uh, I, I, I do see a lot of uh, opportunities slash frustration and opportunity that is uh, there's some more and more data. Right? In the past, we talked a lot about big data. So that, that's how you get familiar with so Hadoop, HDFS, MapReduce, but not many people talk about uh, live big data right now because uh, there's a, a lot of uh, live data, right? Stuff like Kafka, like Red Panda, Pulsa. And uh, like in the recent one or two years, the, uh, it is not like a uh, large data model, like LRM. Uh, even this week uh, in, S, uh, in S, uh, CES, we're talking about uh, large action models. So there's a lot of things going on, but essentially people needed to absorb much bigger and uh, uh, immediate uh, data in a very efficient, efficient way, but uh, underlying technology doesn't really give you uh, a good foundation. You have to learn a lot of uh, open source technology. You have to learn the programming language. You have set up big cluster. There's a lot of things many uh, to work on. For example, my uh, my last two years in Spark, we, we did leverage stuff like Kubernetes, we leverage Apache Flink, leverage Kafka, leverage Kinesis. It's true, there's many components in, in that project to set up a large scale multi talent uh, data pipeline. And it is it is not cheap. And we have almost 100 engineers. Again, we, we build a, a very interesting product. We, we process sometimes over uh, multiple petabyte data a day. But in that kind of a scale, the, this entire stack is very complex. Uh, we make it work for sure, but uh, uh, we feel like there can be a, a different way, an easier way. So that's why um, some of us come coming from Sprung background, thinking that is, hey, if this uh, uh, processing data in the in the in the emotion uh, to reduce the sending too many garbage or some low level data to the destination, can we have a system in the middle to press data in more efficient way? Um, and the, is the Apache Flink the only option. So we ask those questions and uh, we, we take a, a very aggressive approach that is that uh, we build a new engine and uh, this is based on C++, not based on Java. And uh, we, we, this gives us a very uh, independent uh, tool that is you don't have to worry too much about other components. You just uh, set up uh, either a single node or cluster, very efficiently leverage the latest uh, uh, Linux or OS file system level Features such as I will ring that you 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 aiming for the lowest possible infrastructure uh, overhead, but also you you gain the the best performance 
and uh, yeah, we we work on that, um, and also we leverage Clearhouse because uh, there are I guess maybe one or two thousand different uh, SQL functions in Clearhouse. Uh, that that the product database is very solid, so we we leverage Clearhouse as the kind of a SQL SQL engine mainly focusing on the uh, historical side, but uh, we implemented something new for the streaming processing and uh, also try to unify them together so that uh, you don't have to set up uh, like time pass and the clearhouse actually there's a single binary. So the, the journey that is uh, we, we start from uh, this uh, unified approach and uh, we have our first uh, cloud release. I think uh, uh, almost uh, one year half ago and uh, uh, we also have some on-prem uh, customers, but uh, in the same time, we feel like this is such an amazing product. Uh, we do want to open to more users, especially for the host community. So uh, three three months ago, we made the decision to uh, have our core engine open source under Apache License V2, which is a very friendly license. And uh, uh, we, we started to really get more feedback from users, even they don't really want to Made the decision to purchase our cloud right now. Yeah. Thank you so much for this background. Uh, certainly makes a lot of sense. I understand that it's difficult infrastructure to work with and very expensive for organizations and these real time uh, streaming uh, data needs, as well as analyzing historical data, putting everything together in real time. Uh, the applications are in every industry. My understanding is in fintech, for example, or, uh, you know, with Internet of Things. Um, DevOps, like there's, there's, there's a real pain point there. And now coming to today, uh, if you could talk about a little more about the decision to open source, how it influences uh, distribution, as well as the ease of new people to uh, play with the technology, all the way to actually enterprises adopting it. I'm, I'm curious, how are you mapping out that process uh, for, for your product and for Proton? And what it's looked like yeah. today in terms of you know the adoption, the conversations you're having, and and monetization as well, how it can help uh, the company be sustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's uh, that's actually one of the kind of uh, fun part, and also I'm not saying that dark part, but it's also some challenging part because in the past I, I always in the role such as engineer, engineering lead, engineer manager, director, uh. And I don't have to worry too much regarding the go-to-matic strategy, how to uh, do the customer call, all, all those things, and all of the pricing. Um, uh, but again, I, uh, many of us in this uh, time pilot company, we are coming from technical background, but uh, we, uh, we really learn things fast, maybe we make some mistakes, but uh, we try to improve ourselves and uh, adapt uh, to uh, what we need to do. So, um, so I guess uh, the reason why we start Mm -hmm. Our company for the first one or two years really has on to be the product and the don't. We discussed with open source to strategy a little bit, but we don't really make the open source at the very beginning. Partly mm -hmm. because that is uh, we 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 know we are working on a very challenging problem, and it is not easy to suddenly do the something amazing uh, to some other project or some commercial product which has been there for ten or twenty years. For example, in in the fintech uh, space. You may know that is that company called KX. The product is called KDD, I think. Um, it is very expensive software. I guess they don't really support cluster, but uh, yeah, it is already widely adopted by many bank or mm -hmm. like uh, uh, hash funds. And they also use a very special language called Q. <laughs> so they, they do give you very low uh, latency, high performance, uh, but uh, People who spent maybe two years learning it don't want to uh, turn to other projects because this that kind of a learning experience become their assets, right? Just like I'm, I'm not sure how many people right now in, in the world is still using Coba, right? So those 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 programmer maybe they can be very rich because they are having a very unique skill. So it's very interesting. But uh, my point that is, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, mature slash especially the uh, players in this space like uh, uh, mm -hmm. KDB uh, in the FinTech area and uh, for example, Apache uh, Flink, Apache Spark, or even KSQL DB, they, uh, they, they are already be their space for a long time. But uh, I, I do see a lot of campaign, for example, for the KSQL DB uh, and the, the, the future of that project is not very clear, especially one confronts 
put so much effort, uh, money to uh, build the Flink uh, cloud service and, uh, and, and solutions. So, um, so we know this is not a easy project. I know that some project today people just wrap the open 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 AI API to have a new product to like this product within two or three weeks. It's not the case for us. So we have a lot of uh, database engineer. We we do our uh, talent or cloud services. We do have a UI which I demoed to later. That is we really wanted to give a, a new experience to the developer. That is. Um, it is very fast, but it's very easy to use. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to do. So we don't worry too much about open source at the first, uh, at the very beginning. Actually, also because we're coming from the background of Splunk. You know, Splunk is not really open source product. But it's very successful. And also, uh, one of the key reasons that is uh, Splunk, they have very nice uh, infrastructure written in Plus, but uh, under the cover. Uh, they have very nice uh, UI, and they have dashboard. They have uh, out-of-box solution for security, for uh, for IT monitoring. So you, you don't really have to be experts for for CQ or as a programmer, you just uh, use the product out of the box. So we are, uh, in some degree, we really influenced by Spark. and also other product like Snowflake is not open source. So there's a lot of debate. So somehow we made the decision that is we really needed to. Spend the first one or two years really have the product very ready, um, and also we start on the cloud first. So mm -hmm. I think uh, that was uh, March 2022. I think we have a very first private uh, beta. Then we go to public beta. Then we go to GA. Got stuck to events. Um, but uh, I, I joined in the same time. I joined many uh, technical conference on Meta, and also I joined as many uh, Discord or Slack community as possible, try to reach out those uh, uh, developers to see what, what, what kind of problem they are trying to face, what's the challenge, uh, what's on their wish list. And then I try to present, hey, this is a new tool. It is very easy to use. Uh, we do have the free tier on the cloud, but uh, it's, it's very common that is people say, sorry, I either by company policy or I'm still at the early stage, I don't want to use a cloud service or I don't want to commit it to uh, using a commercial product. Can I have this on my laptop? Can I deploy this in our internal communities faster? And I get so many answers like this and uh, we we think that, hey, since developer is our main user, mm -hmm. maybe manager or CIO, CTO can be our buyer, but developer is the user. And uh, the tools like this, it is very hard not to open source. At least they have the core engine for them to get experience and to get some build the more confidence. And maybe if they want to like let us to manage the infra, yeah, that'd be great. But uh, um, open source seems to be, I mean, we are not Snowflake, we are not Splunk. So there's only a few companies out there can can say no to open source. But I think uh, we 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 do think having open source model ready will open the door for new more people to try our product. And also we contribute back to the community. For example, we leverage uh, Clearhouse and uh, now we are contributing some uh, streaming processing uh, code back to Clearhouse. Uh, but again, we, as a company, uh, we, we move very fast. Clearhouse has a, a lot of other priority. Maybe they are more focusing on the cloud warehouse. So uh, we cannot uh, share every code to them. They don't really have time to merge them. But uh, uh, the idea really is that is on one end, we open source ourselves core engine as bottom. In the, on the other hand, we contribute to those codes back to say Clearhouse, or we, so for example, we leverage uh, a project called Bensos as a, a source of sync framework. We also contribute back to. So we want to be a good player in the in the space. In the same time, more importantly, we want to get more uh, user feedback from the developers, uh, even they don't have no intention right now to use our commercial. Absolutely, excellent. And it, it, it is really, I think uh, we just uh, spent about the last uh, two, three months on this. And uh, uh, to be honest, I'm still new to this open source, uh, I'm not saying marketing, but at least the community building. But uh, yeah, it gives me more opportunity to talk to more developers because, uh, yeah, we are not really trying to sell you anything. We are building an interesting product and just try, try to let you know and you can try it for free and give us some feedback, no matter. Having a feature request or even a PR, that would be great. So 
uh, more conversation started because uh, we do have an open source uh, project here. Yeah. Phenomenal. And, uh, you know, this vouch is for the open source motion. Uh, great to hear that already you're getting all this new feedback um, and traction and requests from people. And of course, it goes hand in hand with making it easy to use. And I think you've been doing a great job so far showing how easy it is to use with all these demo videos you make uh, on Twitter, for example, on X, like you publish them very often at Jove, uh, your handle. So I was very impressed and like, you know, you overlay yourself all the time, try different formats. So I really like that. I don't know if there's anything you could uh, share with people in terms of, uh, you know, building in public and, and doing those kind of demos, putting yourself in front of the camera. If there's anything you learned so far or a tool you found that you really enjoyed. And then all the way to actually podcasting, you have your own uh, podcast, Streaming Caffeine. And um, I'm curious you know, how it has helped with gathering this sort of feedback, hearing the problems people experience in the industry. Um, and, and, you know, positioning the company as well to, to solve those problems and, and uh, you know, foster these relationships. Just, just curious to hear uh, how you've been experiencing all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do uh, try a different uh, approach in the past uh, one or two years, especially the last year. I, mean, I started the podcast. I joined more conference. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so lucky to be a presenter in the conference. So I invite online or offline. And I said that more blog. Uh, essentially, I think uh, me as the co-founder, and uh, no matter what kind of title I have, but I really want to do whatever I can to help the company, help the product to be more successful. Right? If if now, uh, for example, we already have awesome database engineer to write the code. I don't have the good CPS engineer to write the code, uh, but uh, we do need the uh, people to. Uh, Further to let more people know the awesomeness of Tempas and and the Proton, and also we need to build a more partnership. We need to uh, educate the market a little bit about what is streaming processing. Uh, so I feel like this is uh, really something I can contribute, no matter to the company, to the team, or to the wider uh, peer in, in this market. So that's the reason why a uh, couple of things you mentioned that is the stream caffeine is a very casual podcast it's more like hey uh, i talked to some of my friends or some new friends in this space it's not really about time class or problem it's really about hey what kind of cool project you are working on in this streaming space no matter you are working on say message bus layer or you are working on streaming processing uh engine or you work on some database uh i just want to add this some Fun elements. That's why I'm using the uh, streaming caffeine. So uh, people sometimes uh, usually have a, a cup of uh, espresso or latte. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, actually, I actually position this as a streaming cafe. But uh, my first guest actually is Xander coming from Bywax. Bywax, by the way, is an awesome open source project, uh, especially for Python developers. Uh, so we are a strong believer for CQ, but uh, I know that a lot of people prefer using Python to uh, have more flexibility. And the Powerx uh, is a cool, cool, cool way to using Python as the interface, but underneath they have that uh, a Rust engine, which is very fast. So uh, my, my first uh, guest is a vendor from Powerx, uh, and he said, "Yeah, maybe we should be more inclusive. So people might drink uh, tea, for example, but uh, all those stuff have a uh, caffeine. So <laughs> let, let's call this like streaming caffeine, and uh, we have a lot of a uh, cool conversation. And uh, sometimes I do ask a similar question as this one that is, hey." Uh, I do have the interest, but you may want to share more to the audience that is, what's your lesson learned when you're building a product or have a new project? Um, so this uh, streaming caffeine, I, I think right now it's uh, um, 10 or 11 uh, episodes. I, I interview people in different ways, sometimes virtual or uh, in person. Uh, and uh, I, I do, uh, maybe I mentioned one or two sentences about time pass or problem, but uh, the, the point, mm -hmm. point that is, this is not uh, 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 commercial purpose, it is really a very casual way for people uh, want to join this space or already in this space want to know what's happening. In the same time, also have other, uh, not really podcasts, but more like a playlist that is, for example, how to learn streaming SQL in three minutes. Uh, every, every video I try to uh, edit, edit or record this within about three minutes, so uh, every three minutes you learn a new concept. Of course, I also do some other product demos, uh, join some questions. Yeah, for example, we, uh, we are now using uh, Riverside FM, which is awesome too. I think 
about uh, like 10 months ago, I think I have the very first time someone else interviewed me also using Riverside. I think <laughs> he also published some video and a blog. I said, oh, this is such a nice tool. And I started using it. Um, also, some of my, my streaming podcast, uh, typing podcast using it. It is a very nice tool. And in the same time, you know, there's some AI magic in this tool, but uh, kind of person needed to, nothing just be perfect, but uh, sometimes we do have different requirements. For example, it's okay you have a YouTube video for say 40 minutes, but uh, on Twitter, for example, I think the limit is the uh, one forty second, just like one forty characters. So yeah. about two minutes. So two minutes. Um, and then you can maybe you you can put a long video, but people don't watch for that two minutes video on LinkedIn. So you don't need to edit in different versions, add some maybe uh, subtitle or you feature stuff. So I do use some other tools such as uh, Final Cut. I using Riverside. I using some other tool, but. Uh, um, that's awesome i think you're doing a great uh job so far uh keep it up and uh yeah it gives it gives ourselves as the host the opportunity to form these connections to learn uh from from the guests as well as for the guests to share everything they know and everyone get through these reps of you know putting ourselves in front of camera discussing and, and, and then if I, one, thing I want to, one thing i want to add that, that is uh, uh this is also kind of a mindset shift right because uh when mm-hmm. I was a senior manager or director in a big company like Spunk, sometimes manage like 50 people, uh, I do spend more time on how we can define OKR, how we can have the process, hiring or retention, of course, improvement, things like that. When I was in that position, I'm not really so passionate regarding uh, social media or LinkedIn. But, uh, but now I'm in this uh, founder position. I do need to make more connections as looking for opportunity, but also in the same time, I do see a need to build our own brand. And uh, position better for ourselves, that is, we are the domain experts. Because uh, we, uh, we are so quiet uh, for me in the past, and uh, uh, now we are building a new next generation product by open source. Uh, people don't really have a lot of context about the product. So if mm-hmm. they start to believe that it's, yes, you are a person with the right knowledge, experience, skill, and you already experienced so many things. And if they start to trust you as an individual, then it will be easier if you say, hey, this is the, this is the product, I spent so much effort, and that's a lot of uh, uh, good uh, condition for all my people around. So that will be a higher chance for, for, for your audience to, to build the confidence and to build the product. So I'm, I'm not saying I have to be, uh, Influencer, I will really, never be, but uh, the point that is the reason why I spend so much time on the writing uh, every day uh, or publish videos from time to time is to build this uh, kind of cadence and awareness. That is, uh, no matter you are on YouTube, data streaming, the, you, you check my blog, actually, sometimes not really related to my products. It's more about my opinions, things like that. So I don't want to get confused. But anyway, the key point that is uh, also I sometimes I help people using AI by helping people using their tunnel, but they are still in the data space. So I right. don't really have to sell them to using templates, but if they really see my article, my blog, give them help, and uh, I'm not asking for return, but uh, that kind of uh, trust, that, that kind of uh, um, influence can help me to. Uh, reach out to more people and uh, make their life easier. I mean, that will be making me very interesting. And also, more importantly, talk to the, the, the users. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Making sure you get the feedback, uh, validate your, your assumptions. And no matter it's thought or it's on it doesn't really matter. No matter whether it's uh, infrastructure features or it's a solution for a certain industrial, it doesn't really matter either. As long as it's not for a particular user, because the, the, the key thing we want to avoid that is we don't want to spend too much effort just to, to make one user happy. Mm-hmm. If that's very unique for them, then you cannot uh, leverage that kind of effort to sell to the other user or make at least to make the other user more efficient. So the key point that is uh, uh, be very careful to spend effort as a project, focus more on the product, no matter the product is, as long as it's, it's a, 
repeatable pattern, as long as it's uh, really solved real problem, you, you are on the good course. Exactly. That was that was very insightful. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this. And, and it is a tension for a lot of infrastructure companies, uh, you know, navigating, building more for the organizations that need to self-host and maybe have uh, different compliance requirements or, you know, for the cloud version. And uh, it can be a challenge to balance everything where to put engineering bandwidth. But, you know, as you said, at the end of the day, uh, you need to do something that is repeatable and it's going to benefit a lot of people, uh, a lot of organizations and developers. So. That was, that was really insightful. Thanks so much for, for sharing this. And uh, without further ado, I think we can uh, transition into the demo section. And for that, I have my co-founder, Zaf, a joint to, to help go through the demo. Okay, um, sure, yeah. And then on your end, sharing your screen, I think, should be good to go. Yeah, sure, yeah. I can share the screen. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Hey, Joe, it's great to have Hello. you here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so let me... Uh, Demonstrate a little bit about our products, uh, both on the template side and on the bottom side, to give you an idea about uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, so, uh, so bottom is the open source uh, engine we publish to make the data engineer more efficiently to process data in Kafka, in the IoT, dev IoT devices, in uh, fintech data sources. And uh, you can think of this as a CPU engine for you to process data in an efficient way. Uh, in the past, uh, or even today, people using tools like Apache Flink or KCQDB or write their own code to process the data by themselves. And uh, it requires a lot of uh, learning uh, and uh, tuning and the intellectual costs because uh, those are not uh, easy enough to learn and that they are complex. And uh, because of the, uh, the step is uh, JVM, but also there's a lot of components. Sometimes you have to Spend maybe two or three months to really set up a very healthy system. But uh, uh, for this uh, we we build a just on top of the clearhouse, so it is very efficient, and uh, we add a lot of uh, stream processing uh, processing capability, so that uh, you can use this using CQS interface to process data easily. So, for example, uh, I have this demo stack. Uh, using Repanda as a message bus. So for people who don't really know too much about Repanda, so it is similar to Kafka. Actually, they using the same API or protocol as Kafka, but uh, uh, Kafka, Touch Kafka is written in Java or maybe Star a little bit, and uh, it is very mature product. And the company behind it is confirmed that have the control cloud control platform. So Touch Kafka is almost the de facto data streaming uh, is number one or top three in this space. Uh, and uh, but Repanda is a, a, a Kafka compatible data streaming system, but uh, they implement using Superfast just like us. So we share a lot of us analytics. We are aiming for easy to use, very efficient, um, and uh, we, uh, we have very good integration. So what I'm showing right now is uh, in the in the bottom example folder, and uh, you can see there's a, a lot of different uh, examples. For example, uh, for the car sharing, which is IoT use case, uh, Coinbase, which is a fintech fraud detection, even Hacker News. So in the e-commerce uh, folder, this is using uh, Docker Compose. It's a very uh, the, this is a quite a simple stack. We have the bottom latest version. Here and we have the Repanda as the message bus uh, to different topic for different uh, data. And we have this console, which is this Repanda console is an SUI for you to review all the message in the, in the topic. And the modern data engineer today, that is, uh, you have all the data in different system, maybe in Postgres database, maybe in Snowflake uh, in our some other transact system, but it is very common to consolidate them together in Kafka or Repanda or Kinesis as a message bus. Then you need a tool to process that data. And the very common choice today is Splunk or Spark. Uh, the problem that is, uh, it is a relatively heavy and complex tool for you to learn in the team and set up. So, for example, if now we have uh, this uh, list of topics, imagine you want to 
monitor how your site is being visited. Right? So if you which which uh, which user is uh, purchasing which product and uh, whether your your recent uh, market campaign gets uh, the, the right impact you want. So Rapanda and or Kafka give you this opportunity to put any, any data into the system is a JSON or maybe error or photograph. All those messages can be put in in a very flexible way and uh, you needed to analyze those data. For example, here we have all the IP address, we have the FCC method, or maybe have the size. You may want to understand uh, how many how many requests is using post, how many is using get. Or maybe you can do more interesting stuff like uh, which uh, country or which state is visiting which category. So mm -hmm. the idea that is you 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 have you you consolidate your data in in and this is not the problem we solve in terms of and this is assuming this is already set up. How kind of important can charming that is you already have all the data consolidated in a very nice data streaming platform. Then uh, let's using bottom to understand this particularly without being set up a very complex step. So um, so we have bottom, for example, I think I would have bottom right now for, for example, this is uh, the bottom client. We are using uh, the latest bottom and uh, I show screen which is there's no data available, uh, no, different, no data defined right now. So, Example that is uh, for say uh, this is the docs tempass.com bottom. This is our documentation. Feel free to read more. So uh, we we do have a way to read or write Kafka. Uh, so in this example, we can we can using a snow stream like this. So we define a define a maybe a table or stream. And point to the Rapanda topic, and uh, we can get this uh, data easily. So uh, copy mm -hmm. this one, so run this, and you can see if now if I say select a star from the front end uh, JSON, you can. I mean, this this query never ends. This is also an interesting way that is uh, uh, traditionally CQ is. Uh, is a bounded query. Right? You, you query a range for your snowflake or your postgres, and uh, no matter you wait for one second or one minute, you get the result. But in our case, the CPU is always running because it's uh, see a data mm -hmm. you, know, you can you can for sure you can have uh, ways. For example, I only care about the method. I only care about uh, IP address. For example, in this case, you uh, you can do the uh, Select certain field, or can you have some where we are calls for sure, or you can have uh, aggregation the uh, method count. So maybe we can group by method. So this is a very simple example that is so we can uh, list the how many events for certain posts or certain method. And uh, this will give you a periodical result. And uh, but so this is also based on our default uh, behavior that is every two seconds. But uh, if you want to get the output, uh, say every five five seconds, so you can have stuff like this. You can start. So I, I explain a little bit. That is, uh, uh, we we have this uh, window called. Combo window, which so every so it's uh, misspelled. So yeah, that's right. So uh, every five seconds, there's a window. And in that window, we we calculate how many events in that window. But, and there's some some other window, for example, sliding window that is uh, it's not uh, like combo. It's uh, every five seconds we can have uh, a window moving. In the period, so it's more like give me results every one second for the past five seconds, for example. So mm -hmm. th those are very interesting way for you to keep uh, monitoring the data and uh, without uh, waiting for the next interval. 
right? So traditionally, people know there's uh, some clone job, there's some that's in CL. You either wait for one day or maybe you wait for every one hour to get to the new, new JSON. But uh, in the streaming world, with the popular tool like Costa uh, and uh, Redundant and Pulsar, now it is very easy for you to keep getting data. Now you need to a way to process data in an efficient way, in a continuous way. And that's how we can work. And this is the engine side, but in the same time, we have the uh, time pass, which is more like uh, adding extra UI, adding the cloud friendly interface. For example, uh, it give you a very quick demo that is to say you can define different uh, uh, source or different processing logic, and you can combine them together as of the data lineage, or sometimes we call it DAG. So you can easily understand what, say, for for some, say that this might be too big, too small, but so say for a certain data source, this is the view defined, and how other views is created based on that view. So you can better understanding like uh, if if there's some data quality issues, which component we should be spending more time on it. Similarly, we have some query interface. We have uh, our dashboard alerting systems. Maybe I can show a little bit. For example, we we do folks we do have a lot of customer in the fintech area. So, for example, mm -hmm. you notice the, the 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 price of uh, Block Three of Bitcoin in the last year. So, uh, if you can really set up a very uh, uh, kind of a new project to understand the, the Bitcoin price of some strategy implemented, you might have a chance to, to get some uh, actual return. So uh, so we, we, we do provide a, a very solid tool for them to do the basic data ETL, or they can do the, some sophisticated uh, trading strategy or at least apply some alerts for them to either buy or sell or pay attention. We have some customers using us for security use cases, for example, whether you are being DDoS attacked or some other IoT cases, uh, for example, if you have many cars on the street, which, which area need a more car or whether people are having some issue for your, you know, being some transaction. So there's a lot of things you can do, but essentially those are data problems and we are, being, we are very good at processing that. Well, so that, questions so far. Th thank you so much for the demo, Joe. Um, so with, with, uh, with Time Plus, basically, if we have an, an existing Kafka or Red Panda pipeline, we can just throw Time Plus on front of it, and we can get real-time um, insights via um, these queries and charts and and more, right? Yeah, we, we do spend a lot of time to integrate so with different tools, right? So. Uh, Kafka protocol is obviously uh, the number one tool we support in, in the Proton. So, uh, so we, we do in the, uh, validate how we connect to Confirm Cloud. Mm -hmm. Upstream is uh, the other Kafka alternative, up, Upstash. And uh, some other cases that is, uh, you might want to push data from your sensor, from your IoT devices, from any other system to to bottom. You, you may or may not uh, put them in. So that's also why we have our REST API. So this is a little uh, differentiator if you are familiar with, for so example, Clubhouse. Clubhouse, again, is a great uh, OLAP system, but it's not designed for you to keep pushing data to it, especially if we're talking about small amount of data. So the best practice actually for Clubhouse is you you have either a Kafka or you, you accumulate the data by yourself and put them in a big batch and send it to the house. In that mm -hmm. case, but, uh, you might lose this uh, low latency. You might have to wait either, say, one second or one minute. So uh, we, we enhance this part a lot in Proton because we do have our own streaming storage. So we have our REST API. You can just push any data to us in whatever interval, as small as a single byte. But uh, we can make sure that kind of data will be in our streaming storage and streaming uh, processor immediately. So you can, I don't have time today, but uh, you can check my other demo that is, so we can have mm -hmm. some interesting uh, 
way to say you, you, you install some app on your iPhone or Android and you search it, all the data is pushed to the bottom and you can visualize using these mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, actually, I watched that one. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very cool. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there's many things I can show, but uh, I guess the, the key point that is uh, everyone may facing kind of slightly different data problem. Uh, you might worry about the data quality, you might uh, don't want to save too many data, you only select uh, the important data, high value data to your underlying system. Uh, those problems are real, and I think uh, Flink or Spark or Minerva tool have been there for a long time, but uh, now you have a new tool in your toolbox and it is very efficient. As, it's as, as small as, I think it's four megabytes uh, binary, and you don't really need to worry about JVM. Uh, we have some nice UI in the cloud, but also we see that all using other tools like DB Weaver, whatever tool you're familiar with to, to run your CPU. But uh, you don't have to worry about the JVM, you don't have to worry about the cluster. I think this is give you a very good way to validate your idea. And uh, of course, we support cluster. And uh, when you do the more complex data project, and you can, you can add more element to it. But uh, for the starting point, we hope this can be it. I don't think that's an easier way in the market to give you such a tool to run your streaming security. Mm -hmm. That was super cool. Uh, I loved it. That was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, the last thing that is, yeah, give us a star. I mean, we just open sourced uh, about uh, three months ago. So um, I, I think uh, such tools really need uh, more people to try give feedback. And the give us star can, is one of the great way to help promote the product. And uh, yeah, we can build the community and build the, uh, move this to the next level together. Yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you so much.